Hi, I'm Cheryl Fosnott with Table Talk. Thank y'all for joining me tonight. Uh, thank you for staying up late. It is it is getting late. Um, I have been playing. I got a brand spanking new computer yesterday, and so I was up till 1.30 this morning putting it together and getting it set up. And so I thought today I could just come up here and just do a video on my new computer. But it doesn't work like that. My old computer was a dinosaur and it didn't even have a camera. And this, you have got to download some uh, streaming um, something or the other so that it will go across all these videos and everything. So I have been messing with that for a really long time trying to get it to do. But anyway, I will learn. Uh, this is a process and so bear with me and maybe next week we will be live from my brand new computer mine died this week but fortunately it was backed up I, several months ago I had to buy a an external hard drive because my computer wasn't carrying it didn't have near enough memory and so everything I had on my old computer I had transferred into the uh, external hard drive so I um, didn't lose a lot so I'm very thankful for that so anywho welcome to table talk last week we talked about covenant and over the next few weeks we're going to be talking about who we are in Christ and whose we are and the benefits of who we are and and that sort of thing because if we don't know who we are and don't know whose we are we don't know what we possess and we sure don't know how to uh, use what we do possess so um, it's like being married to my husband Keith uh, if I didn't know he was an electrician I would always be called an electrician for stuff but he is a master electrician and so anytime there's any sort of electrical thing he knows he, he can fix it and I don't have to call anybody else but if I didn't know that about him, I would be calling somebody else. And so we're going to explore who our husband is, who we're in covenant with. You know, it's like if you are starving, stinking to death, and you're married to somebody who owns a grocery store. But you don't know that because you don't spend time with him. You don't, you don't know anything about your husband because you are never... You got married and that was the end of it. You know, it's like once saved, always saved. It's not. It's a process. We work out our salvation daily. And so, uh, but if you're married to a grocery store owner and you don't know it, you're going to starve to death. But if you know it, then you can go in there and not only can you feed yourself, but you can feed other people as well. And so that's kind of the gist of what uh, we're doing with Christ. We're going to find out who we are in Christ and what he has, what he has for us and, the, and how we can access what he has for us and how we can use it and share it for his kingdom in Jesus' name. So uh, I have this list and it says I am and it has a list of 50 things of who we are in Christ once we come to know Christ. And I'm going to take a screenshot of this after the video and I'll put it into the comments so that you can print it off if you want it. But when I got a hold of this, this radically changed me. I uh, caught, uh, framed it and I put it in my bathroom in my dressing area. And when I was getting dressed in the mornings, I would just start looking at some of these things and I it started getting into my spirit I am a child of God I am walking by faith I am casting down vain imaginations and all these things that I am because I am in covenant with Jesus Christ and so we're going to just kind of start going through some of these and firstly he makes us his own he saves us in Ephesians 2 8 it says that by for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself it's a gift from god so what do we have to do to be saved romans 10 13 says for whoever calls on the name of the lord will be saved and romans 
10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you'll be saved. And so we call on the name of the Lord. We believe with our heart and confess with our mouth. And then, so our part of keeping this covenant is he tells us in Matthew 28, 19 to go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. You know, once we get saved, that's our story. That's our testimony. And our job is to testify of Jesus and his goodness. And that's all it is, is just tell your story. and Tell his story and your story because you are one now and it is it's a i love it i posted even this week it is a commission uh he tells us um it also in matthew 18 19 or 18 20 28 20 uh he tells us to teach them to observe all the things that he's commanded us and he says, then, lo, I'm with you always, even till the end of the age. So our our part is to mentor, to teach, to baptize, and to go. And his part is that he will be with us. It is a co-mission. This is the great co-mission. It is not just a mission for one. It is a great co-mission. Yes, Pastor Brian, tell your story because that's you know, people don't know. I can I can tell Pastor Brian's story, but people don't know Pastor Brian. Well, some people do, but they know me, and they can see the transformation that has taken place in me in the last 10, 20, even five years. But because I'm a work in progress, we all are a work in progress. But for the uh, in Romans. 8 16 he says that we are children of god and so we are heirs of god and joint heirs with christ and that's like uh god owns the cattle on a thousand hill he he owns everything he owns everything and we are joint heirs with christ we are heirs of god you know and so that stuff is ours as well like my parents, when they passed, before they passed, I knew I was going to get their stuff. And so, uh, because I was their child, and because I'm a child of God, I get his stuff too. And he's not going to ever die. So, he shed, he spreads it out now. He, de, he de, There's no need to wait And so until we're mature enough. So, he redeems us. He says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. That's Psalms 107 too. And redeemed is bought back. It's what that word means. It's bought back. And so when Adam sinned, he sold us out to the enemy. And when Jesus died on the cross, he bought us back. And all we have to do is just believe it now. So he has, in Colossians 1.13, he's delivered us from the power of darkness. So we are no longer under the power of Satan. We do not have to be under the power of Satan. And he has conveyed us into the kingdom of his son, the son of his love, in whom we have redemption, that's redeemed again, through his blood and the forgiveness of sins. And that's like, one of the most freeing things is to know that your sins are forgiven. He conveyed us, he moved us into the kingdom of his son of his love. But the forgiveness, there is nothing like knowing that you've been forgiven. I mean, I've had hurt people's feelings before. My husband or, or friends or family or whatever, I've hurt their feelings. And I go to them and I ask them to please forgive me. Because the weight of hurting someone... Uh, will weigh you down and it'll make you sick. I mean, hoarding forgiveness in your unforgiveness in your soul will literally make you sick. It will cause cancer. It'll cause ulcers. It'll cause uh, sleepless nights. And so 
We forgive others for ourselves, but God forgives us. You know, I hear a lot of people say that they just need to forgive themselves. Well, I can't find a scripture to back that up. And so what I say, what I tell people is, you know, he has forgiven us. Let's just walk in that forgiveness. We don't have to forgive ourselves. We have to walk in the forgiveness that he has forgiven us in. So um, anyway, Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And justified is just as if I'd never sinned. So when he, when the Lord looks at us, he sees us pearly white, just as if we'd never sinned. And we have peace with God. And so those are some amazing benefits of being in covenant with God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I love, love, love this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all that's all things. You leave that old life behind. Everything is fresh and clean. You know, when uh, leave your dirt behind. When I got filled with the Holy Spirit, the Lord immediately, uh, I was raised on country music. I mean, my parents never got a sitter for us. And so when, my dad loved country music. And so when I was very little, we were going into honky tonks and bars and listening to country music stars. We sit there, we drink Cokes and had popcorn and we would watch Ernest Tubbs or Hank Williams Jr. or Willie Nelson or whoever. And back then, Willie Nelson had short hair and wore suits and ties. And so did Hank Williams Jr. And so anyway, that's been a really long time kind of telling you my age there. But, you know, I grew up around country music. My dad played a guitar. My mom played piano. Uh, on weekends, we were at jam sessions. They would go to people's houses or people would come to ours. And there was music in my country music in my life all the time. And as I got uh, older and uh, I turned 18 or 21 and I started going to bars and dancing and country music would take me places where I didn't really need to be going, especially as a married woman. And so when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, the Lord immediately took that away from me, that love of country music. It was like on the way to church that night, I was listening to George Strait. And on the way home, going home, it sounded like fingernails on a chalkboard to me. It was just like, ah, I can't, it, I could not even listen to it. All things were made new. All things in me. And he put a desire in me to, to keep, keep clean and fresh. Um, in Mark 2, 22, he says, no one puts new wine into old wine skins and new wine is the Holy Spirit. And you don't want to put the Holy Spirit in something that's harboring a bunch of dirty, nasty old sin stuff. And so anyway, new wine must be put into new wine skins. We, the new wine is the Holy Spirit, and we put it into a new skin, a new wine skin, a new thing, a new creation. In 1 Corinthians 6.11, it says, you were washed. We were. I was just talking about that. Clean. You were sanctified, and that means set apart or declared holy, consecrate, free from sin, purify, cause are to seem morally right or acceptable. And it comes from the Latin word sanctus, which means holy. So you were washed, you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. I love that he wants us, and he has given, he has given his all that we are, that we be, pure, clean, new creations. He gave his all. 2 Corinthians 
3.18 says, But we all, with unveiled face, as beholding in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord being made Christ-like. It's a process. We're being transformed. We weren't transformed. We're being transformed. You know, and that the music, the Lord taking that love of country music away from me was just the beginning. You know, over the next two decades, he's taken a, a lot of love for things of the world away from me. And he has replaced them with things that are so much better. I have a love for the Lord now like I never even dreamed possible. I don't know anyone who loves Jesus as much as me. And I, I get to do crazy, amazing, fun things. I get to, he allows me to teach other people to fall madly in love with him. And, and there is no, I mean, I just can't imagine a joy greater than seeing someone that you have mentored come get it. See the light bulb go off and go, oh my gosh. I need nothing but Jesus. And there's nothing like it. In first, uh, Second Peter 1, 3, it says, As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these we may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And so I kind of want to break this down a little bit. He has given, by his divine power, has given to us, that's you and me, those of us who are in covenant with him, all things that pertain to life. Well, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Everything that pertains to Jesus and everything that pertains to godliness. We have that in us. We have to seek it out. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Oh my gosh. You know, there are so many great promises in the word of God. Uh, I would have lost heart had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. It is his will that none should perish, that all have everlasting life. I mean, there's hundreds and thousands and thousands of amazing promises that we can pull out and we can pray and declare and decree over our family, over our friends, over ourselves, over our finances. I mean, he has given us Every, every thing that pertains to life and godliness. And he says that through these, we may be partakers of the divine nature. And a partaker is someone who consumes or indulges something. A person who joins in the activity or action. A person that is characterized by a quality. To be partakers of the divine nature means we become more godlike. That, again, is like being transformed from glory to glory. So, uh, I want y'all to begin reading the word as, as it is a love letter to you. And the promises that are in there are for you. They're for today. They're not for just the disciples 2,000 years ago. They're for us for today. They're for our family for today. And we can stand on them. We can lean on them. We can call them down. We can pull them in and reel them in and, and declare them and decree them and watch them come to pass in our lives. The Word of God is alive. It is alive. There are times when I get my Bible and I will just, I will open it up. And I will just hold it. This is the only book in the world. The Bible is the only book in the world that is alive. And when it is alive, 
you know, when I touch something that's alive, you can feel it. You can feel life in something. You can tell, you know, if it's a live plant or a fake plant. You can tell if a if a animal is alive or it's dead. You can tell live things from from inanimate things. And the Bible is alive. And as we, uh, there are times when I just sit there and hold it because it's alive. And I feel the life coming into me. It's like a, like a patch, you know, a transdermal. <laughs> and I know that may sound crazy, but that is, I, the word is alive. And that's the truth. And so I pray that you all will start looking at picking up your Bible because that's the only book in your home that is alive. It's the only one that can bring life to your situation. It's got the answer to every problem you will ever encounter. It is. It contains the the mysteries to to life. It it is life. It is life. And so I pray that you will begin to look at your Bible as a love and life giving. Uh, like I said, I'm going to post these things of who who we are in Christ as because we are in covenant. And I pray that you will begin to realize that you are not just a, a pew warmer. You were created on purpose, for purpose, with kingdom purpose in mind. His purposes for us are entwined in our very DNA before time began before there ever was a day he took time and created us our eye our iris print imprint there nobody else has an iris imprint just like yours or a tongue impression just like yours or a thumb in our fingerprints are all very unique and the plans and purposes that he has for your life are just as unique as your thumbprint. And it's all entwined into your very DNA. You cannot separate your the purposes and plans, the gifts and callings that God has on your life. You can't separate those things from you any more than you can separate your iris imprint or your thumb imprint. You can't. It's who you are. And he made you who you are before there ever was a day and so i pray that we will begin to dig into his word and figure out who we are and know what we the benefits of being the bride of christ and of being in covenant with him because there are great benefits and um that will help us in this crazy crazy world you know, we uh, we're called. I believe we're called to be water walkers. Uh, you know, during these stormy times, there's storms all around. There's financial storms. There's political storms. There's gas storms. There's all kind of storms. But if we keep our eyes on Jesus, we can walk on the water. And I'm not saying the storms are going to disappear because they won't. But we're all going to get to the other side of the shore. But we won't be the ones in the boat being tossed around. We're going to be walking on the water. We're called to be water walkers. And we can only do that as our eyes are fixed on Jesus. So uh, I'm going to pray real quick for you and let you go tonight. Thanks for staying up with me. And uh, like I said, next week, hopefully I'll be able to do this from my brand new computer that's actually got a camera so lord i just lift up each one who is watching this video father i pray in jesus name that they will come to a saving knowledge of you first and then that they will know that they know that they know who they are in you that they will know whose they are and they will begin to know what they possess lord i it is my heart's desire to equip believers to fight the good fight. Lord, we just love you and praise you. And I pray supernatural blessings, supernatural strength, supernatural wisdom on everyone who's watching this video. 
Lord, we love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank y'all for watching. Share this video. Love you. God bless you. Good night, Pastor Brian. Thanks for watching. Bye.